On April 18, 1955, the world lost one of its greatest minds when Albert Einstein passed away at the age of 76. However, even in death, Einstein's brain remained a topic of fascination for many. Just hours after his death, a pathologist named Thomas Harvey removed Einstein's brain without the family's permission, setting off a decades-long saga that continues to capture the public's imagination. So why was Einstein's brain stolen? The answer to that question is complex, and it involves a variety of factors including scientific curiosity, controversy, and even personal gain. Let's start with the basics. Why did Harvey remove Einstein's brain in the first place? According to Harvey, he believed that Einstein's brain was unique and that studying it could reveal insights into the nature of genius. He convinced Einstein's family to allow him to perform an autopsy on the condition that he would return the brain to them afterward for burial. However, Harvey never fulfilled this promise, and instead, he took the brain back to his lab at Princeton Hospital. Once he had the brain, Harvey began a series of experiments to study it. He took hundreds of photographs and slices of the brain, examining it under a microscope and comparing it to other brains. He was particularly interested in the size and shape of different regions of the brain, hoping to find evidence of what made Einstein so intelligent. At first, Harvey's work on Einstein's brain was largely ignored by the scientific community. However, in 1985, journalist Stephen Levy published an article in the magazine Rolling Stone that brought Harvey's work to a wider audience. Suddenly, the public became interested in the brain of one of history's most famous scientists. But while some saw Harvey's work as a fascinating window into the mind of a genius, others were deeply troubled by the way he had obtained the brain. Einstein's family had never given him permission to keep the brain, and they were outraged when they learned what had happened. They demanded that Harvey return the brain, but he refused. This led to a long and bitter legal battle between Harvey and Einstein's family. The family eventually won custody of the brain, but by that time, Harvey had already made numerous copies and had sent samples of the brain to researchers all over the world. The controversy surrounding Einstein's brain continued even after it was returned to the family. In 1998, a team of researchers led by Dr. Marion Diamond published a study in the journal, The Lancet, that claimed to have found evidence that Einstein's brain was structurally different from the brains of other people. Specifically, they found that certain areas of Einstein's brain were denser with cells than in the brains of control subjects. However, not all scientists were convinced by Diamond's findings. Some argued that her study was flawed because it relied on only a small sample size and lacked a proper control group. Others pointed out that there were many other factors that could have contributed to Einstein's genius, such as his upbringing, education, and life experiences. Despite the controversy, interest in Einstein's brain remains high to this day. In recent years, researchers have used modern imaging techniques to study the brain in more detail, hoping to uncover new insights into the nature of genius. And while the legal battles over the brain have been settled, the question of whether or not it was ethical to remove it without the family's permission continues to be debated. In the end, the story of Einstein's brain is a complex one that touches on many different issues, from the ethics of scientific research to the nature of genius itself. While some see the brain as a valuable tool for unlocking the secrets of the human mind, Others view it as a deeply personal and private part of one of history's most iconic figures.